So e-commerce is actually a really, really fun subject to learn about. And it's not only interesting, but it also covers a lot of different aspects of uh, learning how to take your product to the next level. So in the last stage, in stage three, you learned about prototyping, right? Um, now, let's say you have a really, really good product ready and it's ready for people to use. But how do you reach your target audience? How do you reach your target customers? So this is where going to the market comes into play. And e-commerce is just another part of it. So we're going to be talking about e-commerce today. And e-commerce is actually, um, it, it stands for electronic commerce. Okay. And uh, first off, we're going to be talking about what is e-commerce. When we buy or sell things online using the internet, it's pretty much that's called e-commerce. Um, so like any example, right? Um, when, uh, when you are buying electronics, let's say you're ordering a phone online or you're buying a television online or you have this really good Black Friday deal for some clothes that are available online and you go on to like Amazon, or Walmart and you place an order, that's an example of e-commerce, right? That's an e-commerce business module. So now I'm gonna be sharing a video with you that will be telling you more about e-commerce and it'll help you understand this a little better. What is e-commerce? E-commerce is quite simply the purchases of goods and or services by the internet. To date, over 40% of all internet users have made an online purchase, spending almost $1.5 trillion a year. E-commerce is split into four categories. Business to consumer, B2C, is what most people think of when they hear e-commerce. Remember when you bought that new t-shirt or that book from Amazon? That was you participating in B2C e-commerce. Consumer to consumer, C2C, is when goods are sold between consumers through internet marketing places or online classified ads, eBay and Gumtree are prime examples. Consumer to business, C2B, involves you as a consumer providing a product or service to an organisation. For example, a blogger may review a certain product for a business and be paid in goods or direct payment. Business to business, B2B, where business is conducted between two companies. A good example of this market is us. PeaSoup Digital offers a range of services and sells these services to other businesses. Okay, so that was discussing the different types of e-commerce and we'll get that uh, we'll get more into it in a bit. Now, I'm sure you all know this already, but um, how, how does one even access e-commerce platforms? It's pretty obvious, right? You browse your favorite products on e-commerce websites and you uh, use your phones. Um, laptops, desktops, tablets, um, smartphones, pretty much all of these devices will let you um, uh, access e-commerce platforms. And they're not just websites, they can be in the form of applications as well. And I'm sure, obviously, I don't need to mention that you obviously need an internet connection. Um, the, the word e-commerce itself won't make sense without internet, because obviously you need internet to be uh, able to access these platforms. Uh, you can't just have a computer with you and no internet and be able to buy anything on Amazon, right? Going online and accessing e-commerce platforms, there's so many of them and they let you buy pretty much anything these days, right? You can buy a car, a house, you can buy clothes, toys, gadgets, medicines, uh, appliances, books. I don't need to go over the list. You pretty much know the scope of what you can and cannot buy online. Um, but as we are discussing e-commerce, I think it's important for us to talk about commerce, right? Because e-commerce is basically just a technical extension of the word commerce. It's the technical extension of what commerce is. But what is commerce? Well, um, commerce means buying and selling goods and services, right? Um, that's the basic act of uh, just, you know, like, uh, you buy or you sell things, but not online. It's just simple commerce. Now, that obviously has been around since humans have been around and since humans have been, um, then since they started trading goods. In those days, commerce was all about barter systems. So we'll get into that in a minute. But when we're talking about commerce, it's pretty much the exchange 
of goods and services, uh, at least if you're looking at the uh, how it evolved. So when when people like way, way back when people were exchanging things, uh, that was called bartering. And that was the earliest form of commerce. Obviously, that evolved to a point where people started using currency in the form of coins and paper bills. Um, but yeah, that's how that's how it got started. So uh, the barter system basically means the exchange of goods and services without the use of currency, without the use of money uh, as we know it. So um, now, for example, let's say that um, let's say that I bake bread. Okay, I make bread, loaves of bread every day. I have a bakery. And um, let's say that I really, really, really need, um, um, let's say a pair of jeans. I, I need some clothes, right? Uh, now, if the other person who makes the jeans or is selling the jeans needs two loaves of bread, um, and that's exactly what I think is the value of the jeans, I'm going to exchange that. So that is the double coincidence principle that whoever you're bartering with also must need what you are offering, right? And obviously, uh, this is a really unique situation because you're all, not always going to be finding people who have exactly what you need and want exactly what you have, right? Um, which is why currency, the concept of having coins and bills came into play. Yes, Aram? And like also like in the situation in the video, like there was, um, so like, yeah, you need food like every like maybe like few days, like at least, but, um, but, you, but you only need one pair of shoes. So sometimes your profession can can clash because like yeah some people can buy shoe never buy it again but like exactly so, so for vegetables you have to buy it like like every few days yeah exactly so that's what i'm saying it, it all it's very complicated to be uh exchanging things like this right can you even imagine like if you wanted uh if you wanted a backpack for school you have to find a person who's selling backpacks and that person needs um, um, like 10 cupcakes to give you a backpack. So now you have to go barter something with somebody to get the cupcakes first, and then you go barter with the person selling the backpack. It makes it really complicated, right? So to make trading easier, um, as, as humankind developed, as our society developed, the way of trading and commerce developed as well. After exchanging goods and services, people started exchanging um, goods and services with precious metals like copper, silver, gold. Um, and after precious metals, they introduced uh, metal coins. So people would be, uh, would be paying coins to buy things and services. Now, coins obviously were heavy and they were not convenient for traders, traders to carry coins to different parts of the world um, to trade. So to make trading easier, um, China was actually one of the first countries to introduce paper money back in the 12th century. And actually, be, it's now one of the most convenient ways of doing commerce. All countries have paper bills now, right? Traditional commerce. Now, obviously, traditional commerce includes uh, small shops, flea markets, supermarkets, shopping malls, all, all these sorts of places where you actually have to go and buy it. Uh, like when you go to the mall to buy something, uh, that that activity of doing that would be commerce. But when you're buying something online, it's e-commerce, pretty simple. The difference between commerce and e-commerce. Now, um, in, in, in traditional commerce, buyers and sellers interact directly with each other, right? So you go to the mall, uh, you go to a clothes shop or a shoe shop, um, and um, you try it on, and then they ask you to pay for it, you pay for it and you get it, right? That's commerce. Now with e-commerce, buyers and sellers are interacting indirectly. Like when you're placing an order for the same shoe or for the same clothes on Amazon, you don't know the seller. You're not looking at the seller. You're not talking to them. You're not going to their store. You're simply clicking on a button online and you're trusting that e-commerce platform like Amazon, you're paying them and you're, you're expecting a delivery in return, which is what you get because then Amazon pays the seller right? And then the seller ships it out to you. So the process of transaction is also 
almost manual, even if you're using your debit card or credit card in the normal commerce process, right? So even if you're using something like debit card or credit card, which is obviously a newer form of payment, but you're still using that in a store or in a mall and you're swiping the card, that's manual, right? That's commerce. But if you're entering your debit card or credit card details online on Amazon to buy something, that's e-commerce. So the mode of payment does not really matter as much as the, the medium of payment, right? Uh, the medium of the purchase or the transaction that is being made. Another difference is that in traditional commerce, you can actually try the product. You can look at it, you can feel it, and then you can make the decision to buy it. But when you're buying things online, you can't really do that. Like, has that ever happened to you or your family members when you buy something online and, and the, the delivery uh, is messed up or the box is damaged or the product is damaged or the product is missing or something bad happens? Raise your hands. Like one time it took a long time to get something that I that we were ordering. Okay, Siona, what about you? What was your experience? Um, one time um, I ordered a gift from Amazon for um, my sister's birthday and it said it was coming in time and then later it's like it's not delivering or like it's oh. later. So exactly. So wouldn't you have in that situation preferred going to the store, buying something and then gift wrapping it yourself, right? Yeah. Um, so yeah, that is exactly one of the uh, biggest, like one of the like, uh, uh, important differences between commerce and e-commerce is that you actually get to see the thing before you buy it. Mm -hmm.